Hi everybody, this is Tanya Lux and I'm going to show you how to do a simple clone painting. To begin with, from the photo painting panel, browse out and select the image that you'd like to work with. I'm going to choose this image that I took in Mexico and I can see a full preview by turning on the tracing paper and taking the opacity all the way to zero. Tracing paper is handy for tracing in Painter Essentials. You can choose any brush you want and pull the colors from the photo through the brush. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And I always like to kickstart my paintings by using an auto paint to begin with, or at least in particular with landscapes. So by doing this, I'm going to get a bunch of paint out on that canvas, and then I can come in and fine tune by hand painting. Let's get a larger preview by using Scrubby Zoom so that you get a nice close up view of the landscape. And at this point in time, we're ready to hand paint. I'm going to come up and we take a look at the category that we're in, and that is the photo painting brushes. And this is what is it dumps you into by default when you choose to do photo painting in Painter. So let's just grab a variant. And what I'd like to show you is that the larger the brush, the less detail is going to be brought in from your photo. It really depends on the style of brush that you select. If I choose something like the Impressionist Cloner and we have a real tiny brush, then it's going to bring in tiny strokes that provide a lot more detail in the painting. As you size the brush up, you're going to get larger brush strokes that do more of Wherever I dip the tip of that brush in, it's going to kind of take that color and blend it across. So just so you have an understanding of how these brushes work, I can leave a little bit of that paint there. We're not stuck with just using the photo painting brushes. You can go to any category that you might like. I'm going to select the dab stencils and the flow mat burst. And what's nice about these brushes is that you have a library of new textures called the flow mat textures. And let me just give you a sample of how this works. So for a second, I'm going to make sure I'm not painting with clone color and let's get a blue color that's really going to stand out. And you can see that it's bringing the texture in that I select from the flow map menu there. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this and let's see, I think I'm actually going to go back to that texture right here, which is very interesting and we'll turn on clone color and now I can begin to paint up the clouds in the sky here. So this brush is very expressive, it's interesting, it's adding texture to the painting, and it's doing a really nice job in the case of these clouds of allowing me to blend this up and to really make it look like a painting. Now, if I get a little bit too expressive or maybe aggressive with the strokes um, in the case of sizing the brush up and then coming along right here that might be a little bit too much so you always have undo and you also have different brushes such as a soft cloner where you could bring the photo back in if necessary so the smaller the brush the more detail you're going to bring in the larger the brush the less detail and it's a really good starting point here. Let's choose another media type, another new one to Painter Essential 7 and that's Dynamic Speckles. So once again, um, I've got a particle grainy brush and let's not use clone color so that I can show you how cool this brush is. Go ahead and undo that stroke and we'll turn on clone color. And I'm gonna come up in the sky and do a little bit of kind of swirly twirly strokes up here. So you can spend as much time as you like. The sky actually looks pretty good as it is right now. Um, so I might want to just leave what I have here. And we'll come back up and try a different type of brush. So in the FX category, fog jitter is pretty cool. And I'm going to actually come down here and I'm just gonna add a few subtle, I want a little bit lighter strokes down in the bottom and I can blend that up a little bit later. Let's take a look at what else we have. The Hurricane might be nice for the water down here. And what's cool about this brush, although I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet, this brush by default, if I just press down and I move to the right or the left, so even if you were using a mouse, this is gonna twirl up the 
whatever is underneath it. So it's pretty cool. I may have gone a little bit too far up here, or maybe I kind of like how it looks like there's waves coming up and over. But I had mentioned that you can always bring back selective parts of your photo. And you could use the light touch up brush, or we could use the soft cloner. And when I press down hard, it's going to bring in 100% of the photo. And the coastline was a little bit rough to begin with, but I'm just going to kind of go over the edges here. And keep in mind that you can always toggle the tracing paper on and off so that you can see where you may want to place those brush strokes. Go ahead and turn that off. I think I'm going to kind of bring in a little bit of this. And there was a boat over here, so I might want to have those lights show. All right, so I think this is looking pretty good here. I'm going to come back up and go to the blenders category. And maybe I'll use another particle brush to just blend in a little bit of what we have down here a little bit more. So we have a little bit of texture, but not too much. And this, in just a matter of minutes, I have a painting that looks pretty good. So I hope that you enjoy these tips for cloning your photos, and I'd love to see what you create.